What up, y'all? Welcome back to the Mike Check Podcast. It's T-Word, the People's Champ. Thanks for tapping in. Today, we got a special guest with us. We got boxer trainer extraordinaire, Greg Hackett, straight out of Philly. What's good with you? I appreciate you, man. I'm all right. How about, how about you? Man, I'm hanging in there just another day, talking this good boxing stuff. So I know you're a busy man, and you know we've been trying to get this thing coordinated for a few days. So I'm going to jump right into it, hit you with some questions, and let the folks get to know you a little bit. So for those who aren't familiar, if you've watched any of a uh, why I'm, why I'm sports media, why SM sports media. You've seen Greg on there uh, dropping that real street game. You know what I'm saying? Giving that real box and stuff. So we're going to bring you some of that today. Um, first thing I want to talk to you about is uh, just your experience in boxing. I understand you, you obviously been in the ring as a professional boxer. Now yeah. you also train boxers. I mean, every video is like you at the gym. So I know you're getting that work. So um, if you could share with me a little bit about that, what, what made you decide like boxing was the thing for you? I mean, when I was young, uh, about 12 years old, my mom told me to go to the gym because I was getting in fights like every other day. And I mean, kept getting in fights. And she was like, you got like an anger thing with you, man. You need to go to the gym. So I went to the gym on my own, found the gym. I loved it. I loved the way it smelled. I, I loved the way it looked. You know what I mean? I just loved being in there, the feeling of it. Um, and then knowing that I, could, you know, that I couldn't get in trouble for it, that made it feel better. But, you know, as the time went along, you know, it, it takes more, more discipline than anything. Mm -hmm. So as you were growing kid, you know, growing into a teenager, growing into a man, you want to venture out and do other things. But it, it's really not like that. If you're going to box, you got to box. You know what I mean? That's And you got to be 100% in. You know what I mean? Because anything else can throw you off. So... I mean, I had my I had my troubles with school. I had my troubles with girls. I had my troubles with just food, everything. Like, you know what I mean? I had issues with almost everything. But I always stayed around the gym. I always loved the game. So, you know what I mean? I just I just kept with it. But I wasn't always disciplined. So turned pro around 21 years old. You know what I mean? I didn't have the best start. You know what I mean? I had to learn a lot about the business. And, you know, I just, I just fought whenever I could. I didn't really care about who I was fighting, when I was fighting. You know what I mean? I just was trying to learn, and I was just trying to learn the game because it seemed like at the time all the old heads they either would share inf i mean, wouldn't share information with you, or they just didn't know. You know what I mean? I wanted to know what was going on in the game. You know, and, and that's something I always was curious about. I mean, I got into boxing myself and got back to it at an older age to do some of that masters amateur stuff, right? But yeah. It's, it's like any field. The people that are the best at it, they're either willing to share with everybody or they don't want to share the information with nobody. They just yeah. want to use it for their people to their benefit. And it sounds like you had that same experience. So that, that bridge between your interest and then you becoming pro, did you do anything amateur wise as far as like the tournaments or were you just kind of working at local scene waiting for that opportunity to go pro? I, to be honest, man, like I tell a lot of people, my mom was sick when I was young. So I didn't really, part of me not having discipline, it was not because my mom couldn't control me. I knew she would be in the bed. You know what I mean? It was no way nobody could stop me. So yeah. I was out, So I was outside. You know what I mean? A lot of times when guys, was they, they was getting groomed for this boxing thing, I was outside. I was on the, you know, on the block. You know, we started hustling at about 14, 15 years old. You know what I mean? I'm really just doing what I want to do. Not because I want to do it because I want to be a bad kid. I just, you know what I mean? Survival too. You know what I mean? You gotta make your money so i'm just outside doing what i want and, and and because of that i only got to fight probably about eight about i say 16 times about 16 fights oh wow as, so as i didn't get to, yeah as an amateur so i never got to any big tournaments i went to one under 19 tournament and i was they disqualified me on the scale for being eight like eight ounces over wow like that was and that broke my heart you know what i mean but yeah. it is what it is that had to be rough. And I mean, I, I can kind of tell, you know, just, just listening to you in previous interviews, I know you got a story, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I, I feel like what you've gone through is gonna help all the fighters that you're working with now, which I'm gonna get to in a second. But I wanna talk about how the things that you were dealing with and you, you had a different type of motivation. Like you said, you had to hustle, you had to figure things out early on other fighters the path is laid for them they got a sponsor they got people pushing them and they taking all distractions away what was the thing that helped you continue to go to the gym and decide to sign up and fight and take those fights knowing that i still got these other responsibilities that these dudes don't know nothing about did that help you or do you feel like that might have hurt you in a way 
I mean, going to the gym for me was therapeutic for one. Two, boxing used to be like a brotherhood. It used to be secretive. It was like a motorcycle gang. It was like being in a gang. It was like it was like yeah. being a part of something that you just couldn't get in. Now it seemed like everybody in their mom box. You know what yeah. I mean? Back in the day, people would respond to you different if they knew you box. You know what I mean? And they right. would they would they would handle you different because they and that's not why I box, but I just realized that, you know what I mean, as I went along the way, like like damn, people boxing must be a real thing because people didn't tamper with it. They either it was in or they was out. It was yeah. just that type of thing. So for me, it was just it was just a, it was just a thing, man. It did for me it, I, the confidence, how it, it raised my confidence. It gave me something to look forward to, you know what I mean. But if you're not fortunate enough to get around the right people, you know what I mean, who who have your best interests and who who really want to see you make it and put you in the best situations possible, it's not yeah. going to happen. You know what I mean. I don't care who you are. You know what I mean. It's just not going to happen. This this game is too political. To think just because you can fight, it can happen. Because if that was the case, it would have happened for me. Because I can fight. Yeah, and I, I think that that's one of the difference when you talk about amateur athletics. You compare basketball, football. The talent alone can be enough. Somebody gonna push you through, and to keep the politics to a minimum. With boxing, it's all about the relationships and who you know and who willing to back you. So yeah. I know that can be a little bit of a headache. Now we're gonna fast forward a little bit. You decide to go ahead and take that step to turn pro and. Can you tell me a little bit about the process of number one, being that young guy, you O and O, and you need to get on somebody's card. You need to figure out how much they're gonna pay you. Um, in your own words, what, what was that process like for you? Just like, I'm about to get in the game. Man, I was watching, it was 2008. I was watching people turn pro who was younger than me. I seen a couple people turn pro who I know I would beat up. You know what I mean? <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, damn, like what's the problem? You know what I mean? What's going on? Where? Because I'm hearing you got to get a manager. Everybody like, you got to get a manager. You got to get a manager. Tried to work something out with a manager. Just didn't go right. You know what I mean? So one day, my coach at the time, his name was Eric Johnson. He passed away. He was at the gym. He said, um, yo, uh, a promoter just called me. They want to they, they match up a guy at 168 in two weeks. And at the time, I was weighing like 182. So I'm like, I'm like, you know what? I just had my son. My son was like one years old. I just had my son. I said, go ahead, tell him I'll take it. And then he called me back. He was like, well, they only paying eight hundred dollars. So I said, that's fine. I'm like, I don't care. Like, come on. You know what I mean? I didn't know what fighters was making, and this was only four rounds of boxing, which is twelve minutes worth of work. To me, that's worth it. So I'm yeah. like, all right, come on, tell him I'll take it. So took the fight. Um, I took the fight. I mean, I lost the debut. It was a close fight to me. To me, it was a draw. It was a real good fight. I fought a, a under, uh, I mean, not an undefeated, a guy who also was making his debut named Joel De La Paz. He was like Puerto Rican, big Puerto Rican kid, but he yeah. wasn't from he wasn't from the U.S. He was from Puerto Rico. It's, you know, they put him over or whatever. Strong kid, you know what I mean? But I, I felt like I outboxed him a couple rounds, and he got to me maybe one to, once or twice throughout the fight. But it was a good fight. Um, I lost the fight after paying my team. I think I left for like six fifty. You know what I mean? I gave the whole six fifty to my son's mother, and that's how it went. <laughs> and that's that's a hell of an experience, man. Just because, like, like you said, you didn't know, you didn't know what the expectation was gonna be. You didn't know what the money was gonna be like. You no. knew you was gonna get in there and scrap, right? And yeah. I know that just based on what I've learned about you, I know that that probably was the most important thing. I'm gonna go show great for myself and give everything I got. Um, and, and I know, like, you you had a fight not long ago, too. So what year did you turn pro? I turned pro in 2008, April 11th, 2008. Okay, so that was about 14, almost 15 years ago. And you yeah. had a fight, like, at the end of 22, right? Something like that? Yeah. Okay, yeah. now, I believe there's a story behind that, because this was a big guy, right? It was a heavyweight. <laughs> okay. Can you and tell I always, me a little, and I tell me a little bit about five, six. Huh? Yeah. Tell me a little bit about how that went. That had to be like a crazy experience. How tall was he? I think he was like six six. six yeah, like six five, six six. Yeah, man, that's 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 a hell of a that's a hell of a mountain you get in the ring and six six is different when you stand across the ring from somebody. Um, yeah. So I, I can imagine that that was it. Probably was fun because it's something you enjoy doing. Now I want to kind of spin from that to 
So along the way, you decided, I guess, hey, I'm in the gym anyway. You start working with guys. How did you decide, like, actually, OK, I'm going to train and get some fighters and kind of try to take them to the next step? What was that decision like for you to, to become officially I'm, I'm a trainer now? Well, I was I always had a good eye for the game. You know, what I mean, I could always see speed. I could see timing. You know, what I mean, it's certain things I could see. So I was in the gym and it was these young guys in the gym. They was training really hard, but they really had nothing to look forward to. So I said to the guy that was running the gym, I was like, yo, because this gym was based around Muay Thai, uh, Jiu Jitsu uh, uh, and then like clients like working, you know, workout classes and stuff like okay. that. So they was kind of new with the boxing. But, you know, what I mean, it was still a good atmosphere because there was a lot of people down there. So I was like, yo, this year we should get these kids in the Golden Glove. So we ended up with nobody really fighting out of the gym. And then we had nine guys enter the Golden Gloves. Then out of two, two out of the nine won the state championship. So, so it was like, it was like, it was just like, all right, I'm looking at these young guys. I think I was 26 years old. I was about 26. I'm looking at these young guys, you know what I mean? I see they working hard, but they're not really, they don't really got nothing to look forward to. So I got everybody to get together and build a team. And then we and went, and went from there. And then the next year, I had a kid that I was coaching. He turned pro. And then um, I started coaching pros, like, probably late 2013. You know what I mean? I started coaching pros. And then 2014, it got, it got I ended up in uh, California coaching uh, Gabe Rosado for a couple camps. You know what yeah. I mean? Stuff like that. It just just started having fun with it. Okay, that's what's up. Now, if... if I don't know. You can answer this question or not. Either way, it's cool. But if if you could, if you had to pick, which one is probably the most fun for you, coaching the kids or coaching pros? Because I can see that there's some there's some unique differences there. Which which one do you feel like it's more fun for you? Like you feel like you you getting the most out of it? For me, it's the pros because I'm in it to hurt somebody. I'm in it to see somebody get hurt. I ain't gonna bullshit you. I'm in it to to, to build a guy up for him to be yeah. be ready to destroy somebody. You know what I mean? I the the amateur game, I like it, but I feel like they 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 the amateurs is too political and they hurting these kids' feelings. You know what I'm saying? And they making them believe that they're not enough when when they probably the, the, the right guy. But with the pros. You know what I mean you can be built up and you can feel like you the you the best in the world, but then somebody hits you in your head, a lot of shit can change. You know what I mean? So I like the pros because you know we can, you can change the odds in one night. You know what I mean? Facts. I agree with that. I'm, I'm I appreciate you keeping that a buck because the political the PC answer is the kids. I want to see the kids grow up, but hell no, nah, I want to see grown men put that thing yeah. down. So that's what's yeah. up. Now I mean you know you you obviously work with you know with uh boots and some other guys out of philly um do you do you deal with some of the other dudes like danny garcia obviously i said boots ennis and then you've got um cool boy steph coming out of philly too um do you really get to run in that circle or you kind of got your own thing because i mean i can see where you're obviously connected but you know me and my homies don't always do all even though we're doing the same thing we don't always do that thing together um how's that kind of right. for you well, with me, I definitely got my own thing. Um, but when it come to guys like Cool Boy, I work with him as an as, as like assistant coach for uh, two camps. Boots, mm -hmm. I never I never worked as a coach for Boots. What it was with Boots is we'd just be in the gym and he'd be like, "Hey, Greg, let's can we put something together?" I'm like, come on, then we'd just get together and train, put him on some shit, show him some shit, and we'd work on some shit. That's all it is with him. Um, let me see who else you name uh and danny i never worked with danny at all but me and danny cool though but i never worked with danny yeah he's a little way. he's a little bit older in terms of who who popping right now too so yeah i, I get that as well i yeah. mean I, I know that your city put out you know some great talent and all that stuff obviously you're talented so uh, a couple more things and then i'm gonna let you go so there was a video that mm -hmm. popped up um seemed like you and the cat got into it in the gym <laughs> yeah y'all have to take it outside what what was that what was that like because i mean clearly something something went to where forget the gloves me and you just gonna handle this and then we're gonna call it a day what was, what was that moment like what was that i mean we had sparred before but it wasn't it wasn't like as intense as intense because it wasn't no beef it never really was any beef the problem was he just was having a bad day i guess mm -hmm. somebody said something about him he looked at me and was like 
you know what I mean, basically like pick me out the crowd. And by the crowd, I mean all the young fighters in there. And then I always wondered to myself, I'm like, why would he pick me knowing I didn't say anything to him? And then, and then somebody said, Greg, you got to think about it. You older than all them guys. Think about it. All them guys is young and they in shape. And I mean, he not going to say nothing to none of them. He going to say something to you. I said, damn, but do I look sweet or something like that? He like, nah, it ain't that. It's just that he think he got better chances with you. So I'm like, all right. But but little do he know, that's my that's my ollie right there. Like, that's right up my ollie. You know what I'm saying? You want to go outside, that's my thing. Like, you know what I mean? Boxing I, boxing is my thing too. But that, that, that when that survival thing kick in, you know what I mean? It get different. You know what I mean? So if I feel like I got to really, really protect myself, yeah, it's, it get different. So... We just ended up outside just because he was having a bad day and he and he pointed some negative energy towards me and he kept pushing for it. And I just was like, all right, well, let's give you what you're looking for. That's all. It wasn't I nothing crazy. That. I could do that. I mean, that's that's men handling men business. I could respect yeah. that 100%. That's yeah. the way. I wish it was more like that all across the board. You know what I'm saying? It'd be Absolutely. a lot of people out here doing great things. Now, uh, one last thing I want to get with you about is, um, so like I said, you are a trainer now, so you've got some athletes you're working with. Um, tell us a little bit about what we got coming down the pipe, um, who we can expect to see you getting out there, you know, get, getting in the mainstream. I mean, my, the main pupil I have right now is 130 pounder uh, Jabril Noble, 404 knockouts scheduled to fight June 23rd, 2023. So we see what happened with that. He's he, you know, he working hard, just trying to get in the right position as far as business, and, and we just push it from there. I'm also a second to um, James Corey Martin, who who put the loss on uh, Vito Milnicki's record. You know what I mean? I've been working with him and his brother for about a year and some change now. So, you know what I mean? That's all I really got going as far as professional. And then I got a whole nother gang of uh, amateur fighters coming out. I actually got two guys fighting for the regional championship this week, uh, novice class regional championship this week. Um, a heavyweight and a 156 pounder. So, you know what I mean? It's just it's just everyday shit, that's all. That's what's up, that's what's up. Now, if you had to pick one weight class that you would say is, is your favorite to work with as far as training, being a trainer, which weight class do you feel like you get the most out of your fighter? Without alienating anybody, obviously, but you know, we all have our preferences. I think, I think, I, I mean, for me, I love, I love any weight class. But but it always seemed like I always end up with a lightweight. I always get lightweights. Yeah. I don't know why. Every time, like every year, somebody come to me that's a lightweight. I always end up with lightweights. I mean, and lightweights just there, there's there's a that's that middle road. It's like you can start seeing that power, but you still got all that slickness, the skills. It seems yeah. like it's a lot easier to, for it to come together at that weight class too. So that's pretty dope. Well, man, I'm not going to hold you. I appreciate your time. Hey, guys, yeah. this is T for the Mike Check Podcast. This is our special guest, Greg Hackett. Hey, look him up on social media. How can they find you and follow you, sir? Um, Greg Hackett 86 on Instagram, Greg Hackett 215 on Twitter, and Greg Hackett on Facebook. I appreciate you. Hey, that's what's up. Hey, y'all. And until the next time, this has been T. This is Mike Check. I'm out. Peace.